Do subwoofers affect speaker impedance? Now this question comes to us from Andrew in Sydney, Australia. Uh, Andrew writes, most speakers have uh, a 4, 6, or 8 ohm impedance rating. Now if you were to connect a sub via the speaker ins and outs or the high level pass through, that is to say from amp right and left speaker terminals to subs and then on to the speakers as I recommend you do, will this have an effect on the impedance of the speaker? Not many subs seem to have this feature anymore. Mainly they just have LFE, and which is our, our low frequency, um, I, you know, from, from your surround sound receiver. It's a low frequency effects channel. And, uh, or right and line level uh, RCA inputs. And, but for those that do have this high level input, that allows the output of the power amplifier or the input to the loudspeaker to be tied in parallel to feed the subwoofer, uh, which I recommend because it includes the sonic qualities, be they good or bad, of the power amplifier to get a more seamless sound to your system, which as, how many times have I said this, and I will continue saying it until the grass is over my head, the idea behind a subwoofer is to, one of the ideas behind a subwoofer is to blend seamlessly with the main speakers. If your main speakers have a certain sonic quality to them because of the qualities of the power amplifier, which will happen because power amplifiers sound different, this one sounds different than that one. And uh, anyway, you'll get closer to taking those same characteristics of your power amplifier that's feeding your amplifier and feeding that same signal to your subwoofer so you'll have a fighting chance of, of getting a seamless integration into the room which is what you want and there's all kinds of other reasons that you want subwoofers few of which have anything to do with extended bass I know that sounds weird but most of it has to do with the cues around us of footfalls of the the rumble of the air conditioning system and, and people say well, why the hell do I want to listen to the rumble of the air conditioning system because it is one of the cues that you're not aware of that allows you to feel to experience being in a live acoustic space once you lop that off you've lopped off a part of reality so you don't want to do that you want low frequency extension to the best of your ability. And the question comes down to, if I do that in the way that Paul recommends, by connecting the output of the power amplifier or the input to the loudspeaker to the subwoofer, will it change the impedance of the loudspeaker from eight ohms, six ohms, or four ohms? No, it will not. And the reason is, well, not by much. Um, I know. I, I've got a bunch of people out there, engineers going, well, wait a minute. Now you're putting an impedance in parallel with another impedance, and you know that's going to change it. Yep, I do know. However, a 50,000 ohm resistor, which is typically, let's call it from 30,000 to 100,000 ohms, which is the input impedance of a high-level input on a subwoofer, that impedance in parallel with 8 ohms is almost going to be immeasurable. So it may go from 8 ohms to, you know, 7.99, I don't know, I, you know, you've got, it's easy to calculate that out. Um, hell, you don't even need any formulas anymore. If you want to find something out, like the 3dB down point of a filter, you don't have to use 1 over 2 pi RC anymore. You don't have to get your little calculator and figure, well, let me think that the exponent, all that. You just go on the internet. And just, they have online calculators for everything. We were trying to figure out what the, uh, on our, we're designing this, this servo subwoofer. And so we wanted to know, what are the G forces of a moving woofer? And I figured, well, I mean, maybe it's, you know, one or two Gs because it's moving quite fast. Man, it's like hundreds, hundreds of Gs. It, it's amazing. Anyway, we found that on an online 
uh, source. I would, you know, I didn't have to take a course in physics to figure it out. I just went on the internet and Googled it, right? So you don't need to learn much anymore. You can find just about anything out you want, but no, it won't. So a very high impedance, which is what a subwoofer input has, uh, in parallel, together at the same time, of an 8-ohm, 4-ohm, or 6-ohm speaker is meaningless and has no input, uh, uh, no impedance change whatsoever. Okay, thank you for the question. We'll talk to you tomorrow, and shameless plug, 99% true, I wrote this book for you. Have you had a chance to pick up a copy? I would truly appreciate it. I guarantee you're gonna love it. It's a, it's a good, fun book. Um, it's, I know it raises a lot of eyebrows. People go, holy crap, you are lucky to be alive. And it's true. But I am, and I had time to write this book. So get the audio book. It's, it's probably my favorite. I'm reading it. Just go to Amazon and type in 99% true, and you'll find it. Thanks a lot. Talk to you tomorrow.